Evolutionary creation, what is it? Why is it being pushed into churches? And how does it undermine the foundations of Christianity? Evolutionary creation, round squares and other nonsense, this week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Matt Bondi. Now this week on Creation Magazine Live, our topic is evolutionary creation, round squares, and other nonsense. Now today we're going to review an article and, and comment on an article from BioLogos titled, Why Should Christians Consider Evolutionary Creation? Right, yeah. Now BioLogos is a group that believes in evolution over millions of years, uh, and they promote the idea that this is how God created. Mm -hmm. You know, they've stated that the fundamental part of their mission is to marginalize the view that God created recently over six Earth rotation days. Now, biblical creation, that's what you get if you take Genesis just as written, just drawing the meaning right from the text using uh, the laws of her hermeneutics. Yeah, so, so in other words, they're trying to uh, convince Christians not to trust Scripture's account of creation. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's a, a very blunt way of putting it, well, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, by teaching the way that they do, that's what they're saying. So. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to have a look at the article here, and uh, they give some reasons why Christians should consider evolutionary creation, or the idea, idea that God used evolution. And we're going to read short sections uh, one at a time, and then we'll uh, comment on each one as we go. Okay, yeah. Now, hopefully, many regular viewers of Creation Magazine Live, or if you're already a subscriber to our Creation Magazine, you'll be able to see their faulty arguments for yourself. But if you're a Christian and new to the creation-evolution debate, we'll guide you through this article, and then you can decide which view, evolutionary creation or biblical creation, is, is the more reasonable and scientific. So let, let's get started. Okay. All right. So the article begins with, uh, evolution is a challenging subject to consider in the light of biblical faith. So it's often easier to ignore or reject it than engage in meaningful discussion of the topic. Okay, now this is the familiar straw man argument, right? That, that creationists are unaware of the evidence for evolution, and all that's needed is to engage in meaningful discussion, and, and you'll become an evolution believer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's not the case at all. There are many highly qualified, uh, intelligent, well-informed people, including PhD scientists, who know all about how evolution is supposed to work, yet they're biblical creationists. And by the way, around 20% of Americans are considered scientifically literate, but reject evolution. Yeah, yeah. many of the scientists employed by CMI uh, and other uh, ministries that we work with globally, uh, they used to be evolutionists. Yeah. Um, yeah. For many of them, it was the science against evolution that helped convince them that uh, the molecules to man evolution doesn't work. They're not creationists because they don't understand evolution. That's right, yeah. Uh, we, we should also mention that uh, we're, we're talking here about, as you put it, molecules to man, right. the large-scale evolution, mm -hmm. like goo to you via the zoo evolution, yeah. that kind of evolution. Genetic change from generation to generation, natural selection, speciation, adaptation, are all scientifically verifiable, but they have nothing to do with that large-scale evolution. Uh, the, on the other hand, they fit into biblical creation very, very well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the the Biologos article continues, yet considering evolutionary creation has important benefits for Christians, both in our relationship with the Creator and in our relationship with people, both believers and non-believers. Okay, uh, two responses here. Firstly, you got to wonder how Christians are supposed to have a better relationship with our Creator by contradicting what He told us about how He created in his written word, the Bible. Yeah, yeah, and secondly, I doubt that we can impress some believers by implying that the secular history, evolution in millions of years, trumps the history in our own book. Yeah. You know? That's like trying to get someone to consider buying a Chevy while you promote a Ford. Not a very good way to, <laughs> to reach your uh, goal. It doesn't really work. Um, the next part of the article reads, first, Christians should study evolution because, like all the natural sciences, it is the study of God's creation. <laughs> yeah, but evolution is not natural science. No. Evolution is a philosophy through which evolutionists interpret biology. 
You know, Michael yeah. Roos, an anti-creationist philosopher, even noted that evolution is promulgated as an ideology, a secular religion, a fully fledged alternative to Christianity with meaning and morality. Evolution is a religion. This was true of evolution in the beginning, and it is true of evolution still today. Evolution, therefore, came into being as kind of a secular, secular ideology, an explicit substitute for Christianity. So, no, uh, evolution's not natural it's science. not natural <laughs> science. Now, biology, as opposed to evolution, right. is a valuable area of science, and that doesn't need evolution. Natural selection, genetic speciation, uh, how, how living things operate can all be studied without any reference to evolution. Bible-believing PhD biologists testify to the amazing design that they observe in living things that requires a creator. Now, there are two good reasons why Christians should study evolution, and we'll talk about those and continue with the BioLogos article right after the break. Carbon-14 is an unstable form of carbon that decays into nitrogen-14 at a measured rate, and this forms the basis of carbon-14 dating. In 2003, a group of researchers performed an unusual test on 10 coal samples obtained from Pennsylvania State University. The researchers wanted to see if carbon-14 could be detected in the coal samples. This test might be considered unusual because carbon-14 decays relatively fast and should not be detectable after a maximum of 90,000 years. Yet the coal samples tested came from strata allegedly ranging in the age from 37 million to 318 million years. The laboratory tests were clear. All of the 10 coal samples contained carbon-14 and similar amounts. This seriously undermines the evolutionary dates for the rock strata containing the coal, because the presence of carbon-14 affirms that the coal samples cannot be millions of years old. The results fit nicely with the coal forming from vegetation that was buried in Noah's flood. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Okay, if you just tuned in, this week uh, we're reviewing an article by the evolutionist group BioLogos. Yes. And it's titled, Why Should Christians Consider Evolutionary Creation? Now, just before the break, uh, we mentioned that there are two good reasons why Christians should uh, study evolution. First, because it's the reigning paradigm through which most scientific data is interpreted today. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, secondly, um, you need to know about evolution accurately so that you know how to refute it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there are more than 11,000 articles on our website, creation.com, that refute evolution. It's not hard to refute evolution if you really understand how it's supposed to work. So we encourage Christian students and their parents to study evolution so that you can refute it properly. <laughs> right. But study it warts and all. Learn how it's yeah. supposed to work and then also study the science against it and why it doesn't work. Right. Uh, most of the time, scientific evidence against evolution is censored out of the classrooms. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing irony that an organization like BioLogos even has an impact on the church today. Mm -hmm. there's, there's so much evidence against evolution today, yeah. most of it discovered by scientists who aren't even Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, years ago it was the day-age theory. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. what led the attack on biblical creation. Um, now, that's the idea that you just stretch out the days and, and to fit millions of years into the creation account. I mean, that's still popular today, but back then, if you go back 15, 20 years ago, um, it seemed that Christians generally understood that evolution is not compatible with Scripture. Right. You know, the idea that God used evolution to get humans here really seemed to be a minority position that only the liberal-minded churchgoers would probably accept. Right, yeah, and that's why it's so amazing that, that you know, here we are today, and people have gone backwards. Yeah. Right? Instead of getting closer to what the Bible says about the origin of the universe, they've taken a massive step back. They swallowed the whole evolutionary story with its millions of years of death and diseases and suffering and extinction long before Adam at a time when God described his creation as very good. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, even the terminology uh, that's used to describe it is, is flawed. Uh, if you think, that's right. uh, you know, yeah. theistic evolution or evolutionary creation, as BioLogos puts it, um, they're, they're contradictory terms like brown squares or the married bachelor, yeah. you know? <laughs> Anyway, let's get uh, back to the article. Uh, continuing on here, we have uh, creation itself is a complementary revelation to what God has communicated through Scripture and through the created order. God shows how and when he brought about life we see today to his honor and glory. Okay, well, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. Uh, but, but here they introduce several concepts that are at the heart of the theistic evolution error. Uh, firstly, creation in and of itself is not a revelation in the way that Scripture is. Scripture is full of propositional statements, factual statements about something. For example, 
in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, is a statement that can be said to be either true or false, right? A, a sunset or a flower or some amazing animal can testify to God as creator, as, as Romans 1 certainly tells us that creation does, but flowers and sunsets don't make propositional statements. Yeah, yeah. and creation uh, is also affected by the fall, so it no right. longer reflects the, crea the creator in the same way. And human minds are affected by the fall as well. Uh, so we don't receive the witness the way we should. Right. Now, secondly, the created order in and of itself can't tell us how God created. We need revelation for that. But Biologos puts things precisely in the wrong order. They use ideas derived from, from a wrong interpretation of biology to change their interpretation of Scripture instead of allowing the clear propositional statements of Scripture to guide our interpretation of creation. Right. And, you know, does theistic evolution really glorify God? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this may seem controversial to say, but, uh, you know, the God of theistic evolution is not really the God of Scripture. No. No, God is glorified in how Scripture proclaims He's created. Yes. You know, theistic evolution, uh, evolutionists argue for a God that used a cruel process that involves suffering and extinction of most forms of life over billions of years. Yeah. Uh, but 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that death is the last, last enemy. Last enemy, right. right? Um, so, if death of all unfit varieties of living things was necessary to get Adam here, then how can death and suffering be the result of Adam's sin? Well, that, yeah, that's it. And that's a massive problem yeah. with evolutionary creation and almost every other old earth version of creation. We're going to look at some more parts of the Biologos Bio article shortly. Um, now, we're not going to have time to cover the whole article on today's show. If you want to read the entire response, you can do that on our website at creation.com slash round squares. And we'll be right back. Creation Magazine is a 56-page full-color family magazine that is an essential tool for anyone wanting to immunize their family against the anti-biblical worldviews bombarding us from all sides. With no paid advertising, every page is full of powerful articles, ammunition to intelligently discuss nature, history, science, the Bible, and related subjects. Although written for lay people, every effort is made to ensure the content is technically accurate so that even experts are satisfied, and young children look forward to the section written especially for them. Visit creation.com to get your subscription. On this week's episode, we're talking about an article by Biologos uh, to try to justify teaching evolution in the church. That's right. Okay, so Biologos actually uh, teaches against what the Bible says about creation and what the church taught about it, going all the way back to the apostles. That, that's right, yeah. The church fathers, uh, the reformers, the apostles, and, and Jesus himself all taught that God created recently in six earth rotation days. So by having the folks from Biologos come into your church and present teaching uh, that's contrary to what the Bible says about creation, that's a surefire way to cause division in your church. Yeah, yeah. actually teaching anything in the church that's contrary to Scripture is a surefire recipe for division. Right, yeah. You know, in fact, the Bible warns us about that. In Romans 16, 17, it says, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. And it says, avoid them. Yeah, the Biologos not only doesn't seem to recognize that that's what they're doing, they actually promote what they're doing as an evangelistic tool, saying, a hostile attitude toward evolution can hinder evangelism if seekers hear that they must reject evolutionary science before they can follow Christ. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, no. Following Christ involves rejecting any competing claims that aren't compatible with Scripture. Right, yeah. No. Now, that being said, many people working for CMI and other creation ministries were once saved theistic evolutionists. Right. Now, then they saw the incompatible, uh, incompatibilities between the Bible and evolution and the massive scientific evidence against it, and then they dropped evolution. Right, yeah. Uh, and does telling an evolutionist that he can keep his evolutionary faith and still believe in Jesus make him more likely to convert? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> Um, throughout their article, they keep confusing one of the basic tenets of the origins debate, and this is very typical for evolutionists. Their article says, the regular patterns in nature that we call natural laws have their foundation in the regular faithful governance of God. Thus, we believe that God created every species and did it in such a way that we can describe the creation process scientifically. The scientific model of evolution 
does not replace God as creator any more than the law of gravity replaces God as ruler of the planets. Okay, uh, now we've highlighted this in many of our previous episodes yes. because uh, it's so yep. foundational to understanding the origins debate. Um, evolutionists will blend science and history together as if they're the same thing. Right. You know, science involves repeatable experimentation. So when we study how genetic traits are inherited or what designs are the most aerodynamic or you know, the differences in air pressure depending on the altitude, that's science, yeah. right? Uh, if I do an experiment that produces a result, someone else can do the same experiment to see if they get the same result. Yeah, but when we're examining, examining origins, we're investigating things that are historical events right. that cannot be observed or repeated. Whether land animals were created on day six or whether a fish crawled out of the ocean several hundred million years ago, neither of those historical events is available to us today for observation, mm -hmm. and we can't repeat them. So we're, we're, we're dealing with something fundamentally different here than science. What we need in this case is an accurate historical account of what happened, and Christians believe that the Bible is that trustworthy historical account. Yeah, yeah, but the Christians at Biologos don't seem to think that the Bible is a trustworthy historical account. Well, no. <laughs> also, can we describe the creation process scientifically, uh, like they suggest in their article? Um, no. no. <laughs> uh, it was a supernatural event. It's Absolutely. completely outside of natural laws. Uh, we can describe some aspects, aspects of God's providential upholding of the universe scientifically, um, like the laws of physics, uh, for example. But we shouldn't expect the origin of the universe to be able to be explained naturalistically any more than we should expect a scientific explanation for how Jesus turned water into wine or raised Lazarus from the dead. Right. And those are miracles. And yeah. creation was also a miracle. That's right. Uh, Christian theism requires the supernatural, especially when we're discussing origins. And the failure to recognize this is one of BioLogos' more serious errors. They've accepted the atheist's rules of the game, in a sense, censoring out any conclusion that could support supernatural creation. Right. Okay, so their article says, considering evolutionary creation aids the church in its gospel mission, hmm, uh, including discipling young Christians in their faith, an anti-evolution attitude can harm Christian young people by presenting them with a false choice between pursuing science or holding to faith. One recent survey showed that a key factor in the evangelical church's loss of credibility among young people is its assertion of anti-evolutionary creation models that contradict virtually all evidence we find in nature. Now, both creationists and theistic evolutionists claim that their view helps young people keep the faith. The difference is that biblical creationists have evidence yeah. of how harmful evolution is to students' faith and how biblical creation can help students stay in the church during the college years when so many fall away. Want to see the evidence? Watch the fallout video. We interviewed students directly. Uh, it's it's mind-blowing, eye-opening series of interviews that completely refutes the notion that, quote, an anti-evolution attitude can harm Christian young people. And we'll be back with more shortly. Most people know that pollen can cause problems for those who suffer from hay fever. But did you know that pollen is also a major problem for the evolutionary interpretation of the fossil record? Since the 1960s, the scientific literature has reported the presence of pollen and spores within a rock layer called the Horema Formation in South America. This formation is supposedly over 550 million years old, yet according to evolutionary theory, flowering plants that produced pollen didn't evolve for another 390 million years. So why do we find pollen in the fossil record so long before the first flowering plants appear. The simplest explanation is that the fossil record doesn't represent the evolution of life on this planet over eons of time, but it's better explained as a consequence of the year-long global flood of Noah and its aftermath. This is recorded in the book of Genesis, chapters 6, 7 and 8. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Our subject this week is a response to an article by the theistic evolution organization BioLogos. As we said before, they keep failing to make a distinction between science and history. Uh, see if you can pick it out in, in the following statements from their article. Because today's culture is saturated with science and technology, from the latest communication gadgets to new biomedical advances to discoveries of fundamental particles, Engaging culture means engaging science. Yeah, 
Did you see it? Yeah, and all those things are products of science. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Creationists have always been at the forefront of science. That's right. Uh, for some examples, you can see, see the show that we did a couple of years ago. It was titled uh, Famous Creation Sci Scientist from Newton to Sarfati. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, uh, next, we have this statement. Since evolutionary science is integral to modern biology... Uh, uh, no, it isn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mark Kirshner, uh, the founding chair of the Department of Systems Biology at Harvard Medical School, stated that over the last 100 years, almost all of biology has proceeded independent of evolution, except evolutionary biology itself. Uh, you know, molecular biology, biochemistry, physiology have not taken evolution into account at all. Right, okay. There, are, The Biologos article continues, the church must grapple with the evidence and implications of evolution in order to be a witness in the public square. Um, actually, what we need to do is show that the history court in Scripture provides by far the superior framework for understanding the scientific observations being made today. Yeah, it does. We yeah. need to demonstrate that Christianity, without modifying God's word, is a reasonable faith. It's a supportive faith, and it's not a blind faith. That's right, yeah. By accepting the, the implications of evolution, as they say, it would ultimately impose naturalism on the rest of Scripture too, not just Genesis 1-11. to The same hermeneutic, which would demand reading billions of years into Scripture, would also demand that we read the account of the resurrection, for example, in a naturalistic way as well. Uh, the same goes for morality. Uh, there are widespread demands for Christians to, to, to change their stance on biblical morality and, and, and to the secular consensus in a wide variety of areas. Yeah. Take the definition of marriage, for example. Yeah, exactly. So as the article draws to a close, uh, it says, informed Christian voices are critical for leading bioethical discussions on issues such as stem cells and the use of DNA information in caring for the unborn, the aged, and the disabled. Today, evangelical Christians can show that we love God's work in the created order by taking up full participation in cutting-edge research and advocating for science as a tool to protect rather than prey upon the helpless. Yeah, and, and we agree. Sure. But theistic evolution isn't going to accomplish that. No. Right? Theistic evolution removes what is distinctively Christian about our worldview, especially how we think about God's relationship toward his creation, and that waters down our witness. Right. That doesn't make it better. The teaching that God made humans in his image is essential to the sanctity of the, the innocent, uh, the unborn, and postborn life. Now, on the other hand, Richard Dawkins, an atheist who teaches that humans are just evolved apes, thinks dolphins are superior to Down syndrome babies, hence their widespread abortion. Okay, so the article says, science is a way of loving God with our minds. When we seek to understand the created order through science, we bear witness to the creator and gl glorify him through our work. Now, you know, we would agree with that, sure. um, but it doesn't require theistic evolution. <laughs> In fact, uh, theistic evolution undermines that. I mean, yeah. science is great. Uh, that's not the issue here. Once again, they're calling evolution science, and it isn't. Uh, it's a historical perspective. Right. It's the history that Biologos promotes where the problem lies, uh, because their view of history of the universe contradicts the historical record of Scripture. Yeah, yeah. biblical creationists will always face challenges to our commitment to a plain reading of the Genesis text, from those who attempt to read billions of years in evolution into the creation account. So it's important to know how to answer their most common challenges. And today, there are more resources to help Christians do this than ever before. Now, some may argue that it's unloving to oppose other professing Christians, but confronting error is actually the most loving thing that we can do, I mean, with gentleness and respect, for theistic evolutionists and for the church, because taken to its logical extent, the philosophy Biologos promotes is actually evolu it's, it's evolutionary syncretism, uh, not Christianity. Syncretism is a word you'll hear theologians use. It refers to the combining of two different belief systems or two different religions. Yeah, you know, in, in reality, there's no such thing as evolutionary creation. Right. Uh, just like there's, <laughs> there's no such thing as round squares or married bachelors. You know, what Biologos is promoting is actually naturalism with a deistic veneer, and, you know, you shouldn't fall for it. That's right. Uh, so there we have it. Uh, this article about Biologos is, is, is a massively flawed attempt to paint a pretty picture of evolutionary creation. And now that we've gone through this article, we hope that you're not deceived by it and thinking that God might have used evolution. Right. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back with, a, uh, with feedback from a teenager uh, who feels a bit 
overwhelmed by the arguments for and against Christianity, and he's looking for a solid footing for his faith. The reason that the Creation Answers book is so popular is because it covers a huge range of topics and answers more than 60 of the most asked questions about Genesis and the creation evolution issue. Questions like, what is the evidence for God's existence? Could the days in Genesis 1 be long periods of time? How did all the animals fit on Noah's Ark? Does radioisotope dating prove that the Earth is very old? Where do dinosaurs fit into the Bible? And many more. To order your copy, visit creation.com. Welcome back. Now, we get a lot of emails to our website, creation.com, and as we wrap up here today, we're going to look at one that we hope will be helpful to you too. Yeah, now today's feedback comes from CEO, a young man in the USA, and he says, Hi, first off, thanks for your ministry. It's a blessing to my Christian walk. Secondly, I'm only 18, and while I've studied apologetics for a few years, it's mostly just confused me. Each time I think I'm getting somewhere with an argument, creation slash evolution or worldviews, etc., I always find that there are answers to what I would argue for. So... How can I learn enough to be confident in my position without having to get a PhD in biology or, or uh, f physiology or something like that? Uh, it just seems that there's so much info out there that I get lost in it. However, I want to be able to stand firm and to be confident in my position as a Christian. Are there a few key points I just need to learn? I'd appreciate any insight in Christ CEO. Okay, now CMI's Keaton Haley responds with six helpful tips for this young man. Now, we're not, we're not going to get to all of them here. Uh, but the email and Keaton, Keaton's response uh, that we titled Confident Christianity is on our website at creation.com slash confident if you want to read the rest of it. Right. So uh, Keaton says, remember that both Christians and non-Christians have biases and interpret the facts according to their starting assumptions. Understand that presuppositions that dictate the conclusions of unbelievers and then you will be more able to see through their arguments. Okay, another piece of advice that was given is critically analyze not just the truth claims of Christianity, but the claims of its critics as well. Often those who become apostates fail to doubt their doubts. Hmm. They only look at perceived difficulties for the Christian worldview and ignore the greater problems with whatever worldview they adopt as a replacement. Right. So, good advice. And that, that, that's all we have time for today, but that's, that's what our ministry does. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to help you be confident in your faith, mm -hmm. to know that the Bible's true. Yeah. And, and, and we look at one of the most hard to believe, most difficult to believe areas in all of Scripture, Genesis 1 to 11. Right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, check out a free magazine if you'd be interested. It's at creation.com slash free mag. You can download that and take a look at it. And thanks for watching the show today.